What's up, everybody? And today we're checking out the JAS-39 Gripen, how Sweden built the world's best non-stealth fighter jet. This is by Military TV. I will leave a link in the description if you want to watch this. Without me waffling over the top of it, you can certainly go and do that. Sweden and part of NATO. We're going to find out what they're capable of. I've heard that this fighter jet is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so, yeah, I want to watch a video on it, learn some more about it. Don't forget, we'll be... Um, pausing it, stopping it, chatting about it. And if you don't want that, you can certainly just go and click the link down in the description where you can watch the video without me waffling over the top of it. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? That's it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let's watch this. Let's have some fun and let's learn some stuff. Turn subtitles on for everyone. You are probably familiar with famous jets like the U-2. F-16 Falcon or F-22 Raptor. Yeah. Globally, these multi-role combat jets are well known for their superior features and offensive capabilities. But this, this guy's accent. Oh my god. I hope it, I wonder if it's AI. Sounds kind of AI-ish, doesn't it? But have you ever heard of the Saab JAS-39 Gripen? I didn't even know Though Saab not made as famous jets. as its US counterpart, the Swedish fighter jet should not be underestimated when it comes to systems and capacity. Well, how amazing is it really? It looks cool. I like the look of it. Manufactured by the Swedish aerospace and defense company Saab AB. Yeah, I didn't know that Saab made aircraft. Obviously, you see the cars in Europe all the time. But I didn't know they made aircraft. Really interesting. The JAS-39 Gripen is a light single-engine multi-role combat aircraft in service with the Swedish Air Force. The Gripen features a delta wing, which is a wing shaped in the form of a triangle. Mm. It also has a canard configuration with negative stability design and fly-by-wire flight system, replacing the conventional manual flight controls with an electronic interface. Interesting. Just want to go off the wing system here. I'm pretty sure that's the same as uh, the Eurofighter, which I haven't done a video on either yet. Um, and in the, one of the previous videos I did, I said, it kind of looks like the Eurofighter, that. And people pointed out, they're like, oh, that's the that's the Saab aircraft that Sweden use. Um, so, yeah, I just think that this front part and the, the triangle wings definitely looks like By the Eurofighter. By 2020, more than 200 Gripens of various models A2F have been developed. 200? Holy. They've First, let's it. dig into the history of the JAS-39 Gripen. If there's 200 different variants, they've really refined it, aren't they? Holy. The development of JAS-39 Gripen began when Sweden sought to build new fighters to replace its aging Saab 35 Draken and Saab 37 Vigen in the late 1970s. For a defensive dispersed basing plan in the case of invasion, the Swedish Air Force needed a cheap Mach 2 aircraft with good short field performance. The concept included 800 meter long by 17 meter wide primitive runways from the Base 90 system. One goal was to make the plane smaller than the Vigen while maintaining or increasing its payload range performance. It's a very interesting looking aircraft, isn't it? It looks like they've they've mixed the Eurofighter and like an F sixty uh, an F eighteen. That's what it looks like, doesn't it? It looks like it's like a merge between the two of them. The Saab 38, also known as the B-3LA, was proposed as an attack aircraft and trainer, and the A-20, a modification of the Vigen, was proposed as a fighter, attack, and maritime reconnaissance aircraft. The General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon, the McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet, and the Northrop F-20 Tiger Shark were among the foreign designs which were studied and taken as references. F-20 Tiger Shark? I've never seen one of them before. Never seen one of them. I'm going to have to look into that chat. I have to look into it. In 1979, the Swedish government commenced a study for an all-around platform capable of JAS, which stands for Aerial Warfare, Close Air Support, as well as Reconnaissance, indicating multi-role capabilities to satisfy various roles during missions. A number of Saab designs were reconsidered, with Project 2105 being the most favorable, recommended to the government by the Defense Material Administration. Just looking at it, I can, obviously you can see why it's not a stealth aircraft, right? But even still, it looks relatively like, I mean, it's, it's definitely like a Gen 4 aircraft, definitely, because it's up there with the F-18s and the F-16s, like the, just the style of them. 
the Euro fighter. The way that it's designed is very reminiscent of mo what most Gen 4 aircraft look like. Then, in the 1980s, the industrial arm of the Swedish Armed Forces, consisting of several big corporations like Saab Scania, L.M. Ericsson, and Volvo Flagmotor, established the JAS Industry Group as a joint venture. The Gripen was first rolled out by Saab on April 26, 1987, at the company's 50th anniversary. The first flight on December 9, 1988 was actually delayed by 18 months due to some issues with the flight control system. Oh, Problems again, concern I've spoke about this in the past. I'd hate to be that first person flying them. Oh my God, the nerds. Because if something could go completely wrong and the people have died testing aircraft out before. It's just not something I'd ever want to do. Turning the aircraft's avionics, particularly the fly-by-wire flight control system, FCS, and the relaxed stability design appeared during the test program. This problem caused the prototype to crash during an attempted landing at Linkoping on February 2, 1989, uh. with the test pilot Large Rydstrom surviving with a broken elbow. Pilot-induced oscillation... At least he survived that. That looked like a rough crash. Can we watch that again real quick? That looked rough. ...at Linkoping on February 2nd, 1989, with the test pilot Large Rydstrom surviving with a broken elbow. Oh. Pilot-induced oscillation was determined as the cause of the crash, which was caused by issues with the FCS's pitch control routine. Following the crash, the Saab and U.S. firm Calspan introduced software-related modifications to the aircraft. It must be an AI reading this off, right? Let me know if you think it is. A partnership agreement between Saab military aircraft and British Aerospace was announced during the 1995 Paris Air Show. Okay, this I didn't know This cooperation between the two will form the joint venture company Saab BAE Gripen AB with the purpose of adapting, producing, marketing, and supporting Gripen at the international level. I did not know that. I mean, all these, like, Collaborations only boost most of the Western countries anyway, don't they? They only help in general. The partnership also involves the transfiguration of the A and B series aircraft to the export C and D series, which hmm. encouraged the Gripen's compatibility with the standard of NATO. Interesting. That was... You can go back and watch that. It says US Air Force right here. I wonder if this was like some sort of um, training exercise where they were working together. NATO. Oh, yeah, it says NATO. Yeah, okay, yeah. So it must have been like a NATO exercise. Now, let's something. take a look at the design and features embedded in the JAS-39 Gripen. Let's have a look there. One thing that probably differentiates Gripen from the rest of the four-plus generation fighters on the market is its small size along with the low cost required to operate this aircraft. I mean, it's it only a single-engine aircraft, which is interesting compared to something like the F-22, which is certainly not. Even though it's difficult to calculate the flyaway cost, the Gripen reportedly had the government spend less than $60 million. Gripen also boasted its low operational cost, probably the lowest of any modern fighter jets. Apparently, the, physical... apparently the F-35 costs an absolute shit ton to run. Is that true? Is that true? Let me know in the comments. Specs, the Gripen could take off at a maximum of 16,500 kilograms and is able to accelerate up to Mach 2. Notable for its supercruise ability, Gripen has a range of approximately 1,500 kilometers. Damn. For either beyond visual range missile, BVR, and dogfighting combatants, Gripen is surely at the top of its class. The Gripen has a reputation for being user-friendly, with simple displays and a straightforward interface. In terms of lethality, the Gripen was the first fighter in the world to carry the lethal meteor air-to-air -air missile. A I feel like we never do videos on missiles, and I think that's something we should start looking at in the near future, just because I feel like um, it's all well and good having, like, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten missiles on an aircraft. But knowing what their missiles are, because we've watched aircraft videos in the past and they'll list off all these different missiles that can carry, and I'm just like, I have no idea. This sounds cool. I have no idea. So I feel like we should start differentiating between what each missile is and learning a bit more about them, because that's incredibly important as well. Beyond visual range BVR weapon capable of tracking and killing targets up to 80 miles away. The Gripen C is capable of carrying four Meteor missiles, while the Gripen E is capable of carrying seven.
Okay. Extra Another missile. interesting aspect of the Gripen is the addition of dedicated electronic warfare pods to the Gripen's already... Does that mean the amount of extra missiles it can carry then are these ones? Let me go over that again real quick. ...targets up to 80 miles away. This way. The Gripen C is capable of carrying four meteor missiles, while the Gripen E is capable of carrying seven. Okay, so it is the, the, the better missiles then. Okay, that's actually substantial, that, isn't it? Another interesting aspect of the Gripen is the addition of dedicated electronic warfare pods to the Gripen's already allegedly formidable onboard jamming capabilities. According to Saab, this is probably the most advanced EW suite carried by a fighter, making the Gripen a valuable commodity for suppression or destruction of enemy air defense dead missions. Hmm. Boom. Lastly, now let's take a look at the operational history of the aircraft. A total of 204 Gripens were ordered by the Swedish Air Force in three batches. 204 is, is a lot. It's a decent amount. The first delivery was made to the Flyvakmanet on June 8, 1993. During and I just want to preface that it's a lot considering how big their military is. We did a vi I did I just recorded a video on how big their mil Sweden's military is. It'll probably come out after this. And it's not giant, like it's not a big military. So to have that many aircraft is pretty impressive. A ceremony in Linkoping. The last of the first batch was sent on December 13, 1996. The first batch two sample was delivered to the Air Force on December 19, 1996. The Gripen has been exported to Hungary, the Czech Republic, Thailand, Brazil, and South Africa by Saab. Interesting. Finland, Canada, Colombia, Botswana, Croatia, India, Indonesia, and the Philippines are among the countries that have expressed interest, with another dozen or so countries indicating some interest. Interest. That Saab is interesting. Saab has been generally receptive. That is considering Canada as well. I didn't expect Canada. I thought Canada would be way more in the pockets of America being right next to them. Interesting that they're, they, they're interested in getting some. ...to technology transfer and has made it easier for local companies to participate in the production process of some components. This has made the Gripen an interesting option for governments who struggle to explain where they spent the money to the skeptical public. Mm. Very because interesting. of the involvement of British aerospace systems, the United Kingdom has an effective veto over the Gripen's export. Argentina has been unable to obtain the aircraft as a result of this. Yes. On the other hand, in the instance of Switzerland, the Gripen was caught up in the ongoing court case against right-wing agitator Julian Assange, mm. as his supporters rallied against a referendum that would have authorized the Swiss Air Force to buy 22 fighter jets. Interesting. What the, the kind of overarching story I've got from this aircraft is that it's cheap, relatively cheap, incredibly effective and very versatile that's what i've got from this and i think that has all of the boxes ticked for a really good really useful fighter jet um i'm surprised i haven't heard more of this earlier on and i'm surprised more countries haven't asked for more of these i really am uh, considering how cheap they look to or what they've said on here to to actually look after. Very interesting aircraft. I didn't know much about it. It makes me want to do a video on the Eurofighter and figure out why Europe hasn't gone and bought some of these. Like, is the Eurofighter that good? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'd love to know your thoughts. That video was kind of weird. I felt like the AI kept, like, talking at random spots. I kept talking over it a bit more than what I would have liked. But anyway, it was a good video, and I got good information from it. So definitely check it out in the, in the description down below if you want to go and check it out. Other than that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.